Good morning and welcome to morning worship from Tillicutry Parish Church Mance for Sunday the 19th of July. Wherever you are this day, you are part of a worldwide family gathered as they can be. And God promises to come into our midst wherever we might be. This is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Saviour. Lord God, the Samus knew you and loved you. And we share with him this day as we lift our voices and our hearts to you in worship. 
for you are indeed our God. As we gather in your name, may we have a deep sense of your presence with us and of your blessing upon us. With the psalmist, we ask that you would lead and direct our paths. We praise you that throughout all ages, you have been faithful to your children and have constantly demonstrated your love towards them. With the psalmist, we are conscious that we have often strayed from the paths to which you direct us and have instead carved out difficult and dangerous paths for ourselves, pleasing ourselves where and how we journey. And yet you remain beside us, so that when we pause in our error, you are there to gently guide us back to the safe place. Forgive us, Lord, that we are so foolish. Thank you, Lord, that you are so faithful. So as we turn to you now, may we see clearly the path to which you direct us and graciously, lovingly and faithfully seek to follow it. In the name and for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray and to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear the word of God as it's found in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 14, reading from verses 13 to 21. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and he healed their sick. As the evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves and of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men beside women and children. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus had just reached the point when he needed to just get away for a wee while. So he set off across the Sea of Galilee. But someone had told people where he was going. And when he arrived, far from managing to find some solitude, he was met by a huge crowd who clamoured to hear him and to learn from him and receive his healing. So Jesus spent that time with him. But as the day wore on, the crowd showed no sign of waning. And there was nowhere nearby for them to find someone or thing to eat. So what were they going to do? And so began the world's biggest picnic. Except nobody had been invited. There'd been no planning and there was no food. 
the disciples wanted to send the people away to find their own. But Jesus said, no, the disciples should feed them. That is one of the incredible things about the faith we hold. <laughs> it's not just spiritual. It seeks to look after our physical well-being too. God is concerned with our whole lives, not just the bits that are concerned with worshipping him. One of the greatest strengths of our faith, when compared with other world religions, is that our faith is grounded on a God who is close, not disconnected. We know that God sent his son to become a man who knows what it feels like to have a rumbling stomach and want something to eat, to experience a dry mouth and long for a cold drink. So Jesus showed the compassion, which is his very nature, the nature of God. They don't need to go away, he said. You give them something to eat. We all know people who are very clever but seem to be lacking in common sense. They think they, we can think of people whose hearts rule their heads and they get in a pickle. That's how Jesus' disciples must have regarded him that late afternoon. They just knew they didn't have the resources to feed all these folk. They knew that sending them away to find something for themselves was the most practical and caring thing to do. But Jesus was having none of it. You feed them, he said. He told them, look at your resources. Work with what you've got. He said to them, what have you got? Five loaves and two fish. It's not much, is it? Not even enough to feed Jesus and his companions. And here in front of them is this huge crowd. But you know the story. You know it was enough. And you know that the people weren't just fed. But that from that small offering, God provided not just enough, but an abundance. We are standing with Jesus gazing at the crowd and he says to us you feed them give them what they need and still the situation seems far beyond our ability to make a difference so he says to us well what have you got not much we reply thinking of our bank balance which is so much smaller than many other people's forgetting that it is also so much greater than that of many more. Not much, we reply, conscious that we have a finite amount to live on each week, which is not keeping pace with the rate at which costs are rising. Not much, we reply, thinking of the responsibilities we have to support our own folks. Not much, we reply, as we remember the things that we've set money aside to buy. And Jesus says, I don't need much. I only need what you can give. Remember the fish and the loaves. You provide what you can and I will do the rest. The account of the feeding of the 5,000 has so much to teach us about living as God's people today in the world which is ours to inhabit and for which we have responsibility. But as well as its global relevance, it also has a pertinence to our situation as a congregation. Facing the same challenges as other congregations, the length and breadth of this land, we have few people of ordinary means and the demands upon us are great, particularly in these challenging times. But it's a challenge that we can begin to consider for ourselves. 
Jesus never asked his disciples to give what they didn't have. He encouraged them to look carefully at the hidden resources they didn't even know were there. He asked, what have you got? And they replied, not much. But it was enough and more than enough. As we seek to be faithful to God, providing ministry in our parish, spreading the gospel in our community, bearing witness to the power of Christ in our lives. May we not be afraid to look hard for the resources we can offer. Understanding that when we bring what we can, God will turn it into what is needed. What have you got? Not much. If it's freely given, then it's more than you know. Let us pray. Father God, as we reflect this day on the power of sharing what we can, we remember that the world is full of people who need help and support. We rejoice that you have not left any one of us to fend for ourselves and journey through this life alone, but that you have created us to love and care for one another, to support one another and to accompany each other on the road. We pray for those who are beaten down by the world, its harshness and cruelty. We think of those who have fallen victim to the violence and hatred that so often seem the hallmark of the world. We pray that you would open our eyes to the needs around us, which we have the power to affect, and that you would grant us the courage to get involved. We pray for those who are afraid to get involved with the world and its pain, who turn away from those in need, who are blind to suffering that they could help, whose need for self-preservation outweighs any sense of responsibility for their fellow humans. Forgive those who cannot see that they can share the burdens of the world and convict them once more with a sense of your love and compassion. We pray for those who continually seek to serve through their kindness and generosity, by their charitable works and the use of their professional and personal gifts in the service of others. Bless those who constantly give of themselves. Keep them safe in their efforts and enable them to see the fruits of their labours. Uphold them in their weariness and encourage them in their uncertainties. Father, this is your world, and all people are your people. Help us to see them as you see them, and to love them as you love them. And in our travelling, be our constant companions, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Just before we sing our last hymn, um, just a word about the ending to this week's service. It's been good to be able to use recordings from the past and over the past few weeks from Kate and Sandy Patterson and also from Elaine Scott. Today we're going to hear one of our young people, Megan Scott, singing one of our young folks favourite worship songs, My Lighthouse. And if you would like to send in a recording of you singing for me to use at the end of the service, then please do and I will end, add it to the collection.
as this new week begins, may you be encouraged to realise how much you have and inspired to give freely of what you can in time, in talents and in money. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon and remain with you today and always. Amen. <laughs>